I was in a mall some time ago and a fellow come walking toward me and I stopped my son. I said, what is that? <laughs> this guy had about 50 earrings all the way around his ears, all around both of his nostrils. They were hanging all over him. And I stopped him. I said, sir, excuse me. I, I said, don't that hurt? I said, I want to cry just looking at you. It hurt to look at him. He said, no, man, none of this hurt. He said, now that hurt. Son, he had one in his tongue. Now I'm going to tell you, dumber than a box of rocks, let somebody drill a hole in your tongue. Now some of you ladies need about two foot cut off, but you don't need anybody drawing a hole in it. You say, I'm putting my tongue on the altar tonight. No, you're not. It's only 40 foot long. I'm talking about the altar. Body mutilation. Suicidal influences. I was in a meeting the other day, Brother King, and I, I, this is how messed up we are. A precious lady in that church stood up. And she said, I need to confess something. She said, the other day I was going down the road. I'm talking about a precious lady in that church. And she said, from out of nowhere, something told me. She said, I had my three kids in the car. And she said, something told me, take the seatbelts off those kids and hit the embankment of that bridge as hard as you can. What would make a mama want to kill her three children at such in church? Had a man call me some time ago and he said, Pritchard, do you ever think things you shouldn't think? I said, what are you implying, sir? He said, something told me to kill my family the other night. <coughs> Sufferings. You been thinking that way? That's demons. May I say to you, sacrifice. They still believe in sacrifice. Blood sacrifice. I'll never forget my wife and I was in a meeting one time and a man pulled up from California. He opened the back door and there was a beautiful little blonde-haired 15-year-old girl in the back seat. Her hands and her feet were handcuffed together like a dog. He was the pastor of a Baptist church. He drug that 15-year-old girl out of the back seat of the car, threw her out in the road, and gave her to my wife and I. My wife said in there, you asked her, a beautiful little girl named Noah. The daddy drug her out of the car and threw her on the ground and said, I don't ever want to see her again the rest of my life. Her own daddy, the pastor of a church. I said, sir, before you leave, I, I, I need some info. What's wrong with the Noah? What, what, what kind of problems are you having? He said, let me illustrate. He said, and Noah asked if she can move up in the attic, and we let her do so. We let her fix up her room. We let her paint it. We never checked on her. Beautiful little girl. And said, I, I just kind of let her do her own thing. And he said, it was my fault. I didn't know what I was getting into. And he said, one night I told my wife, something's wrong with her. She don't want to eat. She don't want to be around us. She's wanting to slip out at night. He said, something's wrong, with my, something's wrong with our daughter. I said, a Baptist preacher's daughter I'm talking about. He said, something's wrong with our daughter. And he said, my wife and I were down in the basement moving some stuff around. And he said, out from one of the corners, Brother Sisk, a Ouija board fell out on the ground. They start off as fun, don't they, Sean? It's just fun when you start, ain't they? Till the demons show up. And he said, when I found that Ouija board, I said, I know what's wrong with my daughter. She's playing with demons. He said, Preacher, I ran up the stairs, ran through my living room, ran up the upstairs, turned around, ran up the stairs in the attic. He said, it was the first time I'd been in her room since she redone it. Her hair was just a white blonde. He said, I kicked the door open, and to my surprise, she had painted everything in the room black. The whole room. She would put black sheets on her bed, and he said, that white blonde hair was laid out across that black silk pillow. And he said, I walked in the room and said, no! I know what your problem is. And he took that Ouija board and he ripped it. And when he ripped it, she sat up in the bed and he said the dresser came across the room. Boom! Busted a window out of the house. He said, she ain't living in my home. And he dropped off a little 15-year-old girl to my wife and I. Nowhere to go. Brother Danny, we shut her down and I began to pick her mind and talk to her. I'm going to tell you some stout stuff, but you came here knowing I was going to say some stout stuff tonight. She told my wife and I, a preacher's daughter, she said, last Halloween, my girlfriend and I stole a 10-month-old baby out of a shopping center. Y'all letting your kids run around these malls and these shopping centers, you crazy. You crazy. It's a funny thing to me, you'll put a leash on your dog and let your kids run crazy. That's the stupidest thing. You got, hey, you're more concerned about your stinking chihuahua than you are your children. 
I think you're crazy. I think you're nuts. Let your kids run all over the place and said a mother was walked around an aisle and was bent down taking up some stuff and we grabbed that 10 month old baby out of the carriage and we ran. Are you listening to me? I said a preacher's daughter. She said we took that baby out in the woods, preacher, and slid its belly open and we gnawed its guts while it screamed and kicked and died and cried. They ate that baby. How'd you like to deal with that one time? My wife and I was dealing with a brother and sister down in down in Grand Prairie, Texas. We was dealing with a brother and sister, and I looked at her and I said, I'm going to tell you something, honey, there's demons in you. And when I said that, she went, ah! She said, tell him. She told her brother, tell him. He said, I'll tell you the whole story. I said, yeah, she's my sister. And I'm trying to get her pregnant so we can have a baby and sacrifice it. His own sister. You don't think we're not living in a sick world? Let me tell you something. All this television, all these movies coming out, all this bloody, gory stuff, it is a setup for demonology. It is a setup for the Antichrist. Listen, we have lost that sting of being fearful of the unknown. We have seen so much of this gory, demonic, spooky stuff that it's just become an active way of life. But I'm going to tell you something, honey. There is a spirit world. Sacrifices. I hate to tell you this, and I know you probably won't believe me, and I really don't care. I get paid the same. I've heard them speak. You remember when Jesus went to cast the demons out of that crazy man? You know what they said? You know what he said? Has thou come to torment us before our time? Who was that that said that? It wasn't that man. It was those demons in that man. Jesus asked the crazy man, said, what's your name? He said, my name's Legion, for we are many. You know what Legion means? It means six thousand. You know what that demon was telling Jesus? There were six thousand demons in that man's body. You read the New Testament, you'll find out that several times in the New Testament the Bible said, and when Jesus cast the devils out, he forbade them to speak. They are voices. You remember when the sons of Siva decided they were going to act like the apostle Paul and the apostle Peter, they were going to go around casting demons out? And they weren't even saved. And they grabbed the old boy and went to cast the demons out. The devil said, hey, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? And he went streaking to the house because they ripped his clothes off of it. I'm telling you, they have voices. There's a preacher friend of mine, I won't mention his name from the pulpit. His mother's been dead for 20-something years. He said one night sleeping in the camper beside a church in evangelism, a demon in his mother's voice called his name out loud. You don't think demons aren't real? Let me challenge you to do something. Come back here tonight, 2 o'clock. Sleep up here on this altar by yourself. You'll see how real it is. My wife and I was in a meeting in Texas. It was an unusual meeting. Demonology was present beyond comprehension. I could feel the oppressing foul, foul spirits of the damned every night. I was laying in my bus. We lived in a bus for 20 years. I had the back window open. I'll never forget it. It was the spring of the year. I had the window open. My wife is here tonight. You can ask her. I woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning, and the demons had surrounded my bus and were chanting in one accord, out loud in one accord. I laid there for a few minutes, and I listened to them, and I said to myself, nobody's going to believe this anyway. I'll never tell this because nobody in the world is going to believe that they are chanting around my bus. So finally I decided if nobody else is going to believe it, Brother Tooley, my wife, is at least going to hear it. So at about 2.30, I woke my wife up. She said, yeah. I said, I want, you to, I want you to listen and see if you hear what I hear. She laid there for a minute. She sat straight up in the bed. She said, what in the name of God is that, honey? I said, sweetheart, you are hearing the chanting of demons. 